So this example five is very similar to example four. We are having a certain product that has a code 150101. And we have to maintain a safety stock of 50 in this case, the lead time is two weeks here as well. The order quantity is 200 and on hand inventory is 100 units. So again, starting with week one, there are gross requirements of 50. So the requirements of 50 minus available supply of 100 from previous period. So we are having a negative net requirements or in other words, there are no net requirements for week one. And after meeting this uh, demand of 50, we will be left with 50. So that is simple, an inventory of 100 minus a requirement of 50, so we will be left with 50 by the end of week one. Now in week two, we are having a, a schedule receipt of 200. So again, the net requirements are negative because we are having requirements of 50 and the supply is, we are having the requirement of 50 and total supply is minus 250. So 50 from previous period and 200 from this period. So that is negative. So our logic is that we will have a plan order release when there is positive net requirement. So there is no net requirement. So no planned order receipt here as well. And we will be left with, so 50 plus 200 is the total supply. So this 50 plus 200 and a requirement of 50, this 50. So we will be left with 200 units by the end of week two. Now in week three, again, the requirement is less than the available inventory or in other words, uh, we are having something negative here as well, a negative quantity. So 55 minus 200. So that is minus 145. So in other words, there are no net requirements in week three as well. So no planned order receipt here as well. So total supply is 200, so just the opposite of above. So 200 minus 55. So we will be left with 145 by the end of week three. And similarly, I hope you can calculate that for week four. Again, we are having uh, negative net requirements. So that is a negative 90 and we will be left with actually positive 90 by the end of week four. So no net requirements and no corresponding planned order receipt up till week four or in other words, we are available to meet our demand from previous inventory of 100 as well as this planned order a receipt of 200. So that is total 300 that we have had so far and we are able to meet the demand from this uh, quantity. Now in week five, there are gross requirements of 60. So in week five, we are having requirements of 60 and we have to maintain a safety stock of 50 as well. So that will be 110. So in week five, uh, the total requirements are 60 plus 50 and available inventory is 90. So a net requirement of 20. So 
we have to actually place uh, an order to, to receive a quantity of 200 in week five. So the lead time is two weeks. So the order will be placed latest in week three. So 90 from previous period and 200 received in this period. So that will be 90 plus 200. So that is 290 minus 60, this requirement. So that will be 230. So we will be left with 230 by the end of week five. So we are having negative requirements for week six. So I hope you can figure out that very quickly. So in week, week six, we will be left with 170. There are no net requirements, no planned order receipt in week six. So we will be left with, after meeting this requirement of 60, uh, with 170 units. Or you can say in other word that we are having a net requirement of minus 170. And similarly for week seven, so we, we, we are having a, we can say that a net requirement of minus 170 or 170 and left over inventory, just the opposite. That is 170. Now, same is true for week seven that we are having more inventory than there is the demand. So we are having negative net requirements of minus 110, or in other words, we will be left with an inventory of 110 by the end of week seven. So there were no net requirements here as well and no land order receipt as well. So I hope uh, uh, this is clear so far. Now, in week eight, we are having uh, some positive net requirements. The reason is that we are having a gross requirement of 65 but we have to maintain a safety stock of 50. So we are having in week eight, a net requirement of 65 plus 50 minus 110, and that will be five. So there is a net requirement of five in week eight. So we will not place an order of five because the lot size is 200. So we need to receive 200 in week eight. And by offsetting by two weeks, we have to place an order in week six. So we are having 110 from previous period and 200 from uh, this planned order received. So that will be 110 plus 200, so that is 310 and minus the 65. So 310 minus 65, so we will be left with 245. So you could see that there are uh, in, uh, in week nine, there are net requirements of minus 180, or in other words, we will be left with a positive 180. So in week nine, the net requirements of 65 minus 245, that is minus 180 or after meeting the requirement, we will be left with 180 or we are not having any net requirements. And similarly, no planned order receipt in week nine. And similarly, you could see that in week 10, we are again having uh, negative net requirements of minus 115 in week 10. So 65 minus 180 is, uh, is minus 115 or after meeting the requirement of 65 from this 180, we will be left with 115. So there were no net requirements and no plan or the receipt uh, in week uh, and as well. 
So you could fill the matrix by writing zero in the columns, in the cells where they were, there was no planned order, release or receipt, or you can leave them blank. So as we have been discussing that this last row is actually the output of the process. So we are having two planned order releases in this case in week three and in week six. So uh, that is uh, the MRP matrix in this case, and we have made sure that we should have at least 50 items in inventory. So we actually had that minimum inventory in week five, where we maintained that quantity of 50, and in the rest of the weeks, we had a quantity greater than 50. Uh, 